Be symbol. Uh, who is Albert Pike, and why should we be concerned about him? Albert Pike was a Civil War general fighting for the Confederate South. Albert Pike was a very, very, very high-ranking Freemason. He was so high in the Freemasonry that he crossed into enemy territory during the Civil War to give a lecture to the enemy about Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. The Freemasons were on both sides of the war. Apparently it's so. Well, what else do we want to know? Well, uh, I just got a quote from Albert Pike. Now, remember, the Civil War in the USA, 1867, something, no, 1885, something like that. Somewhere, I don't know, 1800s. <clears throat> Anyways, Albert Pike, what do we want to know about him? Well, the quote that he gave us was, if the people want a hero, we, that is the Freemasons, will supply one. Who are some of the heroes? Well, this particular item was David Icke. Who was David Icke? Well, clearly he's controlled opposition to the 1%. Because the photo that was just um, on my Instagram feed was Sir Richard Branson and David Icke you know, when they cut the person's picture in half, and this side is Sir Richard, and this one is David Icke, and it's the same face. It's the same face. It's the same face. It's the same thing. He's the guy. Why has Sir Richard Branson been writing all these stories about the royals? The royals? Yeah, the royals in Britain being reptilian. Because he has for decades and decades. There was even a picture one time of one of the royals. Maybe it was Prince Charles and the Queen reading David Icke's book. Controlled opposition, I guess that's what it is, and that's why you see all of these people, I don't know, I can't help you out, because it's so, like, I don't know, it's quite a stage, it's quite a story, because forever and forever and forever, who's telling the story? It's these one percenters, and they keep spinning us around and around and around, because they're the masters of disguise. And they own all the production companies, and, you know, what are they producing? It's a whopper of a bunch of big lies over and over again. Okay, what else do you want to know? So, this guy Pike, General Pike of the Freemasons, what's this all about? Well, I don't want to tell you again and again, but Queen Elizabeth's cousin is the head of the British Freemasons. So, Freemasonry is a royal institution, isn't it? And, you know, given the fact it's royal, and, you know, Mr. Pike was a Confederate general that was able to cross into Union territory, does it really seem like Queen Elizabeth's, um, you know, I don't know how many great-grandparents it was before you get to King George. King George was the famous Mad King. They made a movie about Mad King George, and he was the George that supposedly was the George who screwed up so badly that he lost the American colonies in the American Revolution. Do you remember this story? It just seems like, you know, this United States of America being a free country, independent of Great Britain, I don't think it's true. Because I don't. Why is Washington, D.C. a Freemason-designed city? Because the architecture is all Freemasonry, and there's Freemason temples there. I'm sorry. The Washington Monument is a great big pillar, and they have great big pillars like that over in Europe, in Rome, for example. Originally, they said no, these things might have originated in Egypt. I don't know, there's symbols of something to do with Freemason power. Should you become a Freemason? Somebody sent me an invitation to join the Illuminati this morning by, you know, messenger. Why? What have they got to teach me? Nothing, because this person that gave me the come on didn't tell me nothing about the Illuminati. Nothing. Just you want to join? It's like, no. Go fuck off. GFO, go fuck off. I don't want nothing to do with Queen Elizabeth. 
I don't want nothing to do with Sir Richard, neither. I don't want nothing to do with any of those aristocrat 1% fuckface things, because they're all devils. And they've been lying to us and lying to us through the tell-lie vision for decades and decades and decades, and we're finally waking up to the fact that those motherfuckers have been running the wars. I don't know. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more time for everybody to come to the same conclusion that the wool has been pulled over our eyes for a very long time. And there's so many layers of evil that are still torturing me by remote control right now. They haven't killed me yet, and they've been trying for years, every day for over five years, trying to kill me. And I'm still here. Why did they want to kill me? Because I'm a threat to them. Because I hold a lot of what? Flight. I'm a light worker, and they're dark, and they're filthy devils, and they're going to die a horrible death. And the end of their empire is now. And you're all waking up to the fact that that is what's going on, and it's a quite a spin when you realize that you're such a ditz of a muggle, and you have been lied to for decades and decades and decades, if you're as old as me. The hardest thing is coming to the conclusion that you were fooled. Hook, line, and sinker. And so was I. And so was everybody else, because we had no other sources of information. And we were... There. And now we're not. Now we're here now. And now we know who our enemy is. And forever and forever and forever, Jesus said, What? Some people say, Pray for your enemies. Okay, I prayed for them. And now what? Well, I don't know what else to tell you, because in the end, Jesus said, Evil doers will be destroyed. So, all of those one percenters and all the devils that continue to harass me keep waiting for the second coming of Jesus. Is it going to happen? Because people have been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. Is it coming? Is it coming? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can't help you out because forever and forever and forever. Don't tell nobody, but you know. You can be the Christ. Can't you? You can. Everyone can. Everyone can raise their consciousness up to 1,000 on the scale of human consciousness. So why don't you do it? You're waiting for Jesus to show up? Jesus is waiting for you. He is. He's been waiting for 2,000 years for you to raise your consciousness while you're in a human body to 1,000 so you can join him in the Christ. Because that's the whole point, wasn't it? He said, follow me. Which means you need to follow him. In the end, the only second coming of Christ is going to be you. You becoming Christ. Because we've been waiting for 2,000 for Jesus to come back. And, you know, there's been a few odd stories along the way that he has visited people. Indeed, it's true. Indeed, it is very true. So Jesus ain't dead. No, he ain't dead. Is he around here? I'm going to bet that he is. Are you going to see him? If you raise your vibration way the hell up to a thousand, I don't know. How are you not going to see him? You don't see those people now, those high celestial beings, because your vibration is too low. So whose fault is it that you haven't met Jesus? Yours. If you want to meet all of these people who, you know, are waiting for you, you have got to raise your consciousness and ditch your ego. Ego stands for edging God out. What is Jesus? He's a God person. you got to get rid of everything that isn't God-like. And that's how you have the second coming of Jesus. 